Welcome to Sam Conversation, a program of South Asia Monitor. Our topic is, are drones the new security imperative? To speak on this, we have Lieutenant General B.S. Pawar, former Director General, Army Aviation, Air Commodore Prashant Dixit from the Indian Air Force, who's a specialist in air photography interpretation. And we have Major General P.K. Chakravarti from the Regiment of Artillery, who's commanded a number of artillery formations and has been quite involved in acquisition of guns and other artillery equipment. General Pawar, would you please throw some light on drones? Thank you, Anil. Uh, in the last one decade, we have seen that drones have come a long way from being just the ISR sources. Today, we have combat drones in various conflict zones. You can see them very active. The latest in this is what has happened in Armenia, Azerbaijan uh, conflict. In fact, the drones have tilted the, the entire conflict in favor of Azerbaijan because of the Turkey's drone being available to them. A lot has been discussed here because of this uh, in the world as well as in India. That, you know, what has happened there, we, the combat drone is a future of warfare or future of modern war. I will come to that a little later. As far as in India we are concerned, we got the drones earliest. All the drones that we have today in our country are Israeli origin. We got the Searcher 1, thereafter Searcher 2, and thereafter the Herons. Basically, the difference between the Searcher 2 Herons is Herons can operate in high altitude. And the Searcher 2, we have used them extensively, Searcher 1 and 2 on our Western Front. The, today, all armies, or I would say all militaries across the world are looking at drones as an essential part of their inventory. One thing I want to highlight here is, well, India has been a little slow, but we are now catching up. Today, as, as of today, we have got about 200 plus drones available with us. Like I told you, Searcher 1, Searcher 2, and Herons, all of Israeli origin. But we have a number of startups now working on, on the drones. And yeah, as you're all aware, in 2018, the drone directorate was established in India. Not purely, not looking at the military, but looking at the civil applications. But the important facet is, that because of this drone directorate and the startups and the civil industry, they have taken a big leap. And actually, they are the ones who will finally provide the drones that the Indian, Indian military needs. All the drones that we have today, whether it's Searcher 2 or are the male category, that is medium altitude, uh, uh, long endurance uh, drones. What we are missing today in India is these smaller micro and mini drones, which are in front units need. This is what we saw, what happened now in Ladakh, Eastern Ladakh, in the face of. That is a very unfortunate that our infantry units, which had to move, or which were there in the front, had no such drones available with them. Yes, there have been a few buys here and there through the command, like Northern Command did buy some drones from one of the startups sometime back. But I'm glad that this has opened up the eyes of the military establishment as well as the Indian Defense uh, Ministry. There is no dearth of startups today in India. Um, they are ready to produce any number, each, every type of drone for you, given the proper backing and support. Recently, this, this month, there um, is a... Uh, uh, th thank you, um, General Pawar. Um, we'll, we'll just go across to 
Hey, Commodore Dixit, um, sir, would you throw some light on what um, looking at, you know, interpreting air photographs in your days was to what it is now? Well, uh, thank you, Anil. I heard uh, General Pawar with great interest. I accept that the application of drones during the Azerbaijan-Armenia war was effective, and so was it equally effective with the strike on the Saudi Arabia's Aramco oil fields by uh, uh, by drones which came out from uh, from neighbor neighborhood. Although it is claimed that the Houthi rebels did it, but there is an American speculation that the Iranian drones were used. So this was one of the initial applications of drones, essentially swarm drones, which consisted of electronic countermeasures, then also uh, aerial photography and so on and so forth. But what I want to share with you as this group is that the utilization of the drones for photograph surveillance has been, been done by the Indian Armed Forces, some of which General Bawar, uh, Bawar took trouble to describe. And they were essentially providing tactical information adding to the strategic picture, the big picture available to us from our satellites, through which we nearly have our daily revisit cycles. Some satellites are high resolution, some satellites, older ones, are not so resolutions. But we have a direct picture being available to us. But what I do find is that we don't have a system as yet to arrive out a picture and dissemination of this data. You know, we what we need is what they call as a UAS, Unmanned Aerial Systems, which consists of drones, which consists of data, and so on and so forth. What General Pawar has said, that maybe if we let loose a drone, a low altitude drone, like the Netra, which is made by an uh, Indian startup, and I believe some of which were shown during the Army Day Parade, pictures of which were easily, and the videos were available for us to see that they were Netras. Netras operate at about 400 feet to about 1,000 feet, and they carry several payloads. And, but they are not a high-speed moving drone. They move, I think, in my understanding, about uh, maximum uh, 200 nautical miles. And that's a slow speed thing. And they have been uh, utilized during uh, search and rescue and disaster relief and so on and so forth. There is an application for aerial photo surveillance is as well available. I'm, I'm not able to say with great uh, authority that whether we ever use them, but maybe this data is not being released to the common public, but they would be great assets. But having said all this, let me put the more greater picture of understanding. You know, Pakistan has been sending drones to us and they've been caught near Pathan Court and places like that shot down by the border security force. As late as, as recently as yesterday. Yes. And also, Anil, what I want to bring it to your notice, or everybody's notice, that the Azerbaijan-Armenia war is truly not the hallmark of a combat activity. The reason is, you know, if you want to deal with a swarm of drones, then you let loose a barrage, a small arms fire, if the drones are operating in low altitudes, then they use phenomena like EMP, which is available. And, uh, and if you use an EMP, the drones can be disarmed because they are operating from a distance of not more than 500 meters from the trouble spot. And also, what needs to be understood is that the application over the Aramco, Saudi Arabian oil uh, installations was similar that the Saudis had missiles, and ACAT, but none of them were able to tackle uh, a swarm uh, of drones. And also, Anil, you can't let fly a barrage of small arms over an oil installation. That is the complexity. So I foresee what General Pawar says. I fully agree with him. There is a great future for unmanned drones, mm -hmm. unmanned AV, uh, UAVs and USAVs. And this was declared in 1961 
by the Air Marshal of the Royal Air Force that the future wars will be fought, fought by unmanned machines that is going to come into being. There is a less and less desire to send a manned platform in combat zones. But what uh, thank you, uh, defending. Uh, I, mean, I want to add just one more thing. We have we have to understand that we also can be dealt with this weapon system. For example, our oil installations, for our uh, uh, protector installations can all be taken to task by drones activity. I believe. Uh, but in addition to acquiring uh, drones, thank you. I will I will stop you for a for a short while here yeah. to get to uh, Major General Pravin Chakravarti, who has who's um, um, uh, apart from being uh, being course mates, um, uh, he has had a lot to do with um, many many you know he he has he's dealt with all kinds of um, you know equipment. For the artillery, drones included, and while we've spoken mostly about um, you know drones which uh, which are which can be used for surveillance, there are drones who are attacking also. Uh, without going any further, I'll request Major General Pravin Chakravarti to enlighten us on whatever aspects have not been touched so far. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you, Anil, and I would like to thank also General Bali Pawar and. Akhmodo Prashant Dikshit, who have already enlightened us on various, you know, the nuances of this uh, weapon system, shall I call it? You can call it unmanned aerial system, whatever you call it. Uh, very fortunate to have been a brigadier and having drones under you. And I've seen them fly. I want to tell you the best part of it. Any system that flies is great if it can't be detected of a drone. You may have thousands of weapons as what you call Akhmodo Dikshit very correctly pointed out. You have missiles, you have guns, you have everything. We are our drones going in and out. I may share with you I used to do it during peace time. In peace. Not in no war, no peace. Over the theater which I would not like to repeat. General Bali has already given you the hints. Then when I move to the Northern Theater, shall I put it? We have been flying drones here, there, everywhere, including the Search of Mark II. I've been flying as far as the valley is concerned. I'm just saying there's no problem with Search of Mark II. And then we got herons. And the beauty is when we got herons, we said we will go into the highest regions. There were a lot of issues which we had to deal. We had to deal with icing. We had to deal with issues of what you call at all, that is, you know, having the drone go all by itself, we could manage. Now, I just want to, well, so much of knowledge is available, but a few things I want to just, you know, bring out. The number of drones available with us is very little for all things, for surveillance, whether it be for, you know, carrying out an attack or for even carrying out a loitering munition type of task. For all these three, the quantity available is extremely little. I must also share with you that the United States has taken it as that 30% of their combat aircraft will be unmanned. You are well aware that the F-16, Boeing, as you know, though F-16 belongs to Lockheed Martin, Boeing has already carried out modifications on the F-16 unmanned. Similarly, the Chinese have carried out modifications on the aircraft unmanned. General Paul has very rightly brought out about the Turkish drone. Let me tell you today, China exports drones 18 countries. So 18, so 18 countries. If China is exporting drones, it definitely is a big issue. Now, the point is brought out, what do we do to, one, increase the numbers, and secondly, to give, as all have agreed, to give everybody a drone, starting from the infantry right up to the Indian Air Force. Now, definitely, the answer does not lie with purely just importing them. Next you'll say that what you call ask the DRDO to do it. They have been on Rustam too for a long time. Nothing has happened. Netra is also not in good. So obviously you have to get the private sector in. And when you get the private sector in, they have private sector cannot produce some magic. 
your msa may take a long time so you have to put a co development between the private sector and the foreign companies once you do that you will be able to do a great thing so far we find that still whatever you may say the heron has the best because it can be weaponized as well as it can go in an unmanned aircraft there is the uav stance the others is we are lucky that we, the navy has already acquired two to three uavs which are being used in ladakh right now incidentally even the plts are being used in ladakh right now eastern ladakh so therefore if you have the guardian uavs come in that's a great thing. the third issue which is most important today all our drones are requiring some sort of landing strip maybe the small uavs with northern command may not need it but you need rotor uavs which today the navy needs it the air force needs it and possibly even the army would need it once you get these in then anil we would be in a position where the drones would be flexible to be used anywhere last word against drones the best of radars are failed let me assure you today yes what i think akomodo said very rightly you get a number of let's say one of our drones was shot down by f16 missile well it's a chance shot all right but the fact remains that if you today put in a horde of aircraft or have say even because we are guns firing let me tell you is going to have no effects there are so many guns that fire on a target how many actually hit the, i don't want to come out with the statistics because they are alarming if you take how many rounds actually hit a target you require something more than that you require precision when engaging these things for precision you need radars which can firstly pick up slow speed at a low height both are extremely difficult having worked with radars to produce such a radar for anybody in the world let me put it to you and the second is you need a weapon which can fire instantaneously and get it down i think the better way is what the iranians do they got a cia uav down and they use electronic warfare instead of using you know matching it with weapons it is better to paralyze a drone which should not be very difficult with the with particularly our air force you know getting all aircrafts having the capability of an electronic sweep i think helicopters are also coming the other two people on the panel will be able to tell us you should be able to undertake this task so my stress would be on rotary uavs and the ability to undertake electronic paralysis of drones uh thank you prabir uh, i think we need a uh, audience to know what is the range of the size of the drones what is the smallest what is the largest and how much of a payload of in in offensive drones how much of a destruction can a drone uh, you know uh, bring down on the target and what would be the range the the, the cruising range of the Uh, drone concern uh jal pawar briefly see uh, let me first say you know we are concentrating on drones combat drones uh you know india uh, there was a figure put out about 2 years back that in the next 10 years the indian military is looking at the strength of about 5000 drones like i told you earlier 200 drones very minuscule and that's what uh, prabir was also bringing across i mean in, and these two are all in one category the medium altitude uh, you know long endurance what you need today which is lacking is the mini mini uavs required for troops in the front that's the military requires and combat uav there is work going on but we are you know remember we are behind schedule Take a country like Turkey. They were nowhere. Everyone talked of USA, Israel, China to some extent in the UAV world map. Look at Turkey today. 
coming up with combat UAVs, coming up with small UAVs, giving it to the other countries. The proxies are fighting on behalf of Turkey. Take uh, Syria, take uh, Azerbaijan and the uh, Armenian war, take Libya. The uh, Turkish, if they have developed this fight, now as far as endurance is concerned, obviously the moment you have the mini and micro UAVs, we are not interested in applying for, because if you want them to fly too long, they can't be small. Therefore, endurance of anything between uh, 30 minutes to one hour and carry a payload two to three kgs. They may themselves be just about two to three kgs, then carry a payload where basically I want what is at the other side of the hill. I don't want them to carry any weapon. You saw that the Indian Army on this Army Day showcased 75 drones, a swarm. That is the next, uh, that is the future, drone swarms. And countries have already demonstrated that. We saw what happened when the drone swarm came against the Russian airfield in the airfield and naval base in uh, in Syria. We have seen these drone swarms operative even in this latest attack on the uh, Saudi uh, airfields, uh, oil fields. Therefore, you know, for drone swarms, you suddenly need smaller drones. You don't need the bigger ones because they have to be also launched. Maybe launch through aircraft. The larger ones today, we are looking at endurance, anything from 30 to 40 hours endurance. You know, there are going to be UAVs even giving you, you know, full day, 24 hours being in the air. But then that requires a lot of advanced, you know, already USA is planning. There's a thing is already going on. But in our scheme of things, like the Heron, about 30 to 40 hours of endurance. That gives you a very, very long time uh, for a, a range to go around and search and how to carry out your task. If you, if you uh, are aware, we have a thing called Project Cheetah going on, where we are planning to arm these drones with missiles. In fact, uh, today only I read somewhere, or it was it yesterday, you know, the Hel Helena anti-tank missile, which is supposed to be fitted on your helicopters, which has finally come. I mean, as a colonel, I heard about it. And today, when uh, you know, I have retired 12 years, the Helena anti-tank missile uh, mounted on a helicopter is finally a reality. They are talking of mounting these missiles also onto these herons. There is a talk. I, I mean, I just read that today. So... We are also looking at, you know, DRDO has been very slow, and Pravi rightly pointed out. But there's a, there are IITs are involved. You'll be surprised to know that IIT Kanpur is fully involved in one of the most secretive projects of UAV. The Indian Institutes of Technology, uh, yes. referring to IIT. Okay. Absolutely. Combat uh, UAV. The name is out in the open. Ghatak. It's a stealth UAV. Imagine, for two years, they've been working on it along with DRDO. So when we say private sector, when we say we have the, the brains in this country, they can produce. Um, th thank you, Ajahn Pawar. Um, Comrade Dixit, would you throw some light on um, uh, we, now just what uh, General Pawar has mentioned about the Indian Institute of Technology and the uh, Defense Research and Development Establishment, uh, you know, pairing up. Uh, do you think they might come out with something like, you know, which may be a little envied by other nations? Do you think but we... It would, yeah. No, it would definitely be a fine beginning, Anil. What General Pawar has brought out very sensibly is that we don't have a scheme. There is some development which is going on by the DRDO that we don't get to see light of the day in the public. They talk of Rustam, and they talk of Rustam too. And what General Pawar said, there are high altitude operations. We have some capacity of loitering at 30 to 40,000 feet for 24 to 26 hours. It's possible. That's happening. But my view is, I think time has come to arrive at a sensible drone philosophy. And I think it's about time our military planners and the planners, at, at whenever these issues are discussed, they sit down together and take a holistic view. Now, uh, General Pawar talked about the Ghatak. 
I have mentioned to you the netra. Netra, as they say. Netra, netra means eyes. Is, netra yeah, means eyes, yes. Netra is what flew at the Indian Army Day. 25 of them. They've been built by a startup which came out of Pune, consisting of IIT qualified engineers. I remember writing about this in Salute magazine, Anil, several years ago when I was yes. a part of your yes. magazine. Yes. And the Netra is a small device, something which Jal Pawar talked about. It's capable of carrying not more than, in my understanding, uh, 30 to 40 uh, kgs, not more than that. But if you send out 20 of these 20, 20 kgs, they can drop depth charges for the Navy. They can drop munitions over combat zones. Only problem is you have to devise a system for accurate dropping and ensuring that the uh, the tr forward travel of the machine is catered to when you release a munition, that is physics, sir. But systems will have to develop. Such a thing is only possible if you have a holistic plan. And if, yes, getting guardians and general atomics machines and from US, and there is a USAV like the Predator class also coming to India. But that is only a learning curve. But as a part of our Atma Nirbhar program, as a part of our largest things which we are supposed to be doing, I am with General Pawar. We must build up a plan, let it take shape, and uh, it is not necessary for us uh, to adhere. Thank you, thank you, uh, Ekam Pradikshit. Yes. I'll now uh, come, uh, you know, come to uh, General Prabhupada Chakravarti again. When I said India making something which. Um, you know, other nations are envious of. He is. He was with the Brahmos. Uh, he, he was. He, he he was on their uh, staff for a short while, a couple of years, and uh, now, is there any chance, Prabir, of our drone technology coming? You know, we 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 have brains. I I have no doubt, uh, having seen, um, uh, you know, our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and civilians, and scientists and all in action. There is no dust of brains here. Do you think we are coming, I mean, or you finally throw light on what all we need to do, including, I think, arming the infantrymen with a suitable drone? Well, I think you've asked a question which will really require a book to be written, but I'll try to be as brief as possible. Yeah. Uh, to be very fair, having been a part of the idea for three years, if I may say, let me put it to you, technology is not something, you know, you can just do it all by yourself. Like today, the, you, you want to start, you initially need somebody to give you assistance. You mentioned the Brahmos. Now, the Brahmos is also an unmanned vehicle fully I mean, and is capable of going to a point. And it does hit with an accuracy of almost, shall we say, a few meters. The point is that the initial technology, initial pieces have to come from somebody who should co-develop with you, who should help you in the game. You cannot start from scratch. Then the MSMEs can come in. I mean, say, Atma Nirbhar is very good. But even if you go to Mahabharat, You'll find that somebody got the bow from Indra. Somebody got the bow from what you call Shiva. I mean, say they couldn't uh, get these weapons all by themselves. I'm sharing with you, having been actually to IIT Kanpur with a delegation headed by an air marshal. And as a part of our, and then going to Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, where General Bali Pawar and the army commander sent me. So that we could, you know, get something of, of what he said, a small UAV. I've been to these places, worked with them. Believe me, it's a tall order to start from the beginning. So what is the answer? I think the chief of defense staff has given, you know, a very nice answer. One, we need a few this uh, Bideshi equipment to start with. That is some for it. And the numbers, numbers will be this. Like you need a few Rafales and then you can add with 83 Tejas or they've got already, I think, 20, you 109 you can take. So the numbers can be desi. 
But to start with, you do need, you know, these predators, the guardians and the Apaches. Not that these names sound very nice, so I'm saying this. Without them, you don't, you can have the best guys. Our guy is only manufacturing it. Aarti Prabhakar was born in Nagpur. She had the DARPA. She's in the United States. So does so many of the others. I, I don't want to name them because I would digress totally. Similarly for the UAVs, if somebody says I'm making this Netra in Pune or Bangalore, rest assured he has got a backup system abroad. Having really gone into micro millimeters of these systems, believe me, you cannot reach a point straight away by yourself. The Chinese have shown us a way. What did they do? They initially got everything and they started what is known as firstly copying, then reverse engineering, and now they have reached a stage where they are taking off. Turkey has done the same thing. Turkey is a part of the NATO. Every weapon, you, do, you would agree that everything on earth was deployed in Turkey and even Iran. Iran at one time, the Istifan had thousand helicopters, American helicopters. And look at the Iranian this thing on the UAV. All these countries have been very closely related to the United States. I am happy that Israel and the US are having excellent relations with India and they are helping us on this. So Atman Nirbhar can only come when either Shiva or Indra I mean, say in modern terms, you can say that uh, who these gods are for the Indian armed forces. They have to give you the technology. Then the IITs go. Let's go to IIT Kanpur, where I spent about five days with the, and he told me, give me a task and you'll be able to do it. I just gave him a simple task. I want a UAV which weighs this much, which does this much. He said, this is a 15 year task. Then we go to Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, headed by an air marshal, whom I don't want to name. It was an ideas group without being. Again, we give them task. They say we can crack any problem in the world. You give them the problem, and thereafter you find that what you call the answer is 15 years, 20 years, five years. We don't have that time. So you're going to tell the private sector, they are the great people. They get in touch with the IIT as well. The IIT also gets in touch with the private sector, by the way. Let me tell you how they do it. The IIT also gets in touch with the private sector. If you want today a component to be married, to be manufactured or developed, you call a vendor. Even the ISRO does it, even Atomic Energy Commission. That vendor gets in touch with somebody abroad, and that's how things happen. And the last point I must talk about education technology. The best people who get information are educations. I have seen, uh, my son is a professor in a US university. So I keep watching who goes there and for what reasons. You'll find the bulk of the people are the Chinese who are going to all US universities even today. Mm -hmm. They are getting all the technology out by, and in our case, if today, Anil, you want to send somebody to the US, General Bali Pawar will have to be spent from his pocket. In the Chinese case, you are sponsored by the government, often by the Communist Party, mm -hmm. to go to that university, do your PhD, do your master's, three years be there and you'll be back over here. And when you go to China and meet these people, well, they don't talk Mandarin anymore. They talk stylish English. They're able to differentiate when red wine is to be taken and white wine and what should be the flavors. And they're able to tell you everything about UAVs and other things. That's the way to go. You've got to copy. You've got to then after that, what you call steal. And if required, and all these have to be done not by military people. They have to be done by so-called our intelligentsia. And finally, you've got to catch up. So the private sector is the best in this bed. This is my own view, because the rest are government servants, nine to five, annual leave, casual leave. They are not looking at profits. Private sector, you know, nails down. You have to do this. Yeah. So this is my submission to you. Thank you, Prabir. I think we've had a very interesting uh, look at drones, which is an amazing story. 
what we played with as boys in school in you know uh, as aero modeling you know um, it is those which uh, with a little more technology have become drones and uh, i think we need the indian armed forces budget will have to be will have to be factor in the requirement for drones to reach every part of indian army navy air force the coast guard the border security force and a number of other security forces who are fighting on our borders against terrorists who are pumped in by by uh, pakistan with china you know blessing all this pro process from behind um thank you very much gentlemen uh, it was a very fruitful and informative discussion all the best thank you so much anil it's been a very very educative uh, discussion for me thanks a lot